Hi, right, what is up everybody? Here's Matt uh, once again here with another video. And today's video is all about Forest, a Active Directory based machine on Hack the Box. Which I think is it's awesome. It's one of the best on the ECO level. And let's get going by uh, looking at this nmap scan that I've just ran and I used uh, just for you to understand I've used the tag pn parameter to tell nmap that the host is already up and running uh, that will avoid uh, well sending some kind of probes to the host to check whether it's app or not um, we have tag sv to perform a service version detection scan adding this column right here plus the C appended to it, which will uh, perform several checks, uh, several uh, default script the nmap scripting engine has for us, for some ports, such as these ones from uh, for HTTP based ports, uh, the header, the title, uh, what else? There are a bunch of ports that doesn't have any uh, default script associated. But we have one in here, for example, for SMB, which is 445. And you can just squeeze it in them both. Um, and moving on, we have tag in to disable DNS resolution because otherwise it would take a minute or two to resolve the DNS. And we have a minimum rate of 500 packages a minute over the, the wire. Since we are in a VPN, uh, that would be super slow if we didn't and in my experience 500 is just about right in the amount of packets we want to send uh when i when i've tried like a thousand or five thousand i've seen a lot of people using uh, five thousand packets i just uh met a lot of information so that that is not worth for me so moving on i have dash p dash tag p dash uh that will perform a scan on the whole range of ports that are available for the I, uh, TCP IP protocol which is 65,535 65, obviously you see 12 in here because these are the number of closed ports and if you sum all this up that will give it 65,535 TCP ports right now there are equal amount of UDP uh, which we are not scanning uh, for this mission, but that's fine. And tag the end because I want to save all this input uh, on a file called general inside a folder called nmap. And here's my IP. So, moving on, we have here our results. First up, we have uh, port 53 for simple DNS plus. This is the DNS server, and we can start um, querying it, right? So, we can use the now uh, the tool called deg and with this we want to do something like this in a real environment you would query it by the google's dns server that would be a dot a dot a dot a or cloudflares that would be one dot one dot one one dot one dot one dot one for once right and in this case since we don't have um i mean this is just an internal network we will use our target IP. Now, you may be wondering what is the dollar sign T, right? So the dollar, the dollar sign T is just a way to invoke bash uh, variables. So I have to find minus this one. And I just name it T because I like to uh, rel re relate it to target, right? So I can call it like symbol uh, dollar sign T. So dick at the target IP and then I can query the um, domain we want now we have here thanks to LDAP we have htv.local now uh, we need to do, do well let me just uh, nano ATC hosts because I already have it I'm not going to change it like this so uh, you want to specify your target IP here and add your let me remove this your um the domains you find, such as htv.local, and if we query it, you will see that htv.local, and we can specify so, some records, records, DNS records, such as MX, 
an S from a server, MX uh, means mail exchange or any, and I will query any of those. So here's what I found in an NS record named server forest.htv.local. That's why you saw it added in my etc hosts file. We have also a host master, which is not relevant for us. This is a SOA record, which I'm not sure what it stands for. Uh, but it's fine, just fine. We can just move on from this. And in order to perform a zone transfer attack, which I encourage you to look uh, up, look up on Google just to find, my, find out more information, uh, we can try a XFR that will perform a zone transfer attack. If we are successful, we will we might be able to discover some other route, some other subdomains. Um, that are not intended to be public, right? In this case, it failed. So that's all right. We can just move on. So we have also the port 88, right? With 88 Kerberos, we can try several things. Uh, basically, the um, most common thing to try at first is to query this port, this Kerberos service uh, for a user. Right, so hey, Kerberos, do you know this user? Yes, I did. Yes, I do. No, I don't. Sorry, that's what we can do with a tool like Kerberos. Now, Kerberos, you want to download it. Sorry for that. You want to download it uh, from GitHub, right? And it's from from um, Rapnap, Ronnie Flatters. And I can run it like this because I created a symlink to a file, uh, a, yeah, a binary or file under the location bin. That's why I can execute it from anywhere. But you will need to compile it because it's created in Golang, I think. So definitely check the GitHub and figure it out how to install it. That's a tool. Uh, uh, sorry, that's a job that every pen tester needs to be comfortable with doing, right? So yeah, so I can curb root and I can user enum, right? So I'm gonna be user enum. I will see some other options. And first of all, I need to specify a DC, right? The domain controller or the key distribution center, aka KDC. So with this, I need to specify the my, my, well the target IP. But look at this. It says if blank, we'll look up via DNS. We don't have a server, a DNS server like. Um, on the network rather than that 50 port 53 but if we don't add it uh, it will uh, not work right so let's go ahead and we'll check it out so if we specify domain htv.local we can specify 100 threads just because I want and then because I am, I am on a controlled environment and I'm gonna be specifying user look at this the syntax username some flags and, and at the end um, the word list, so user share sick lists, usernames, shadow.net, and it will ask for a domain controller, right? So let's just give it to it, go DC, D, and we should be good to go. So we have several users here, and I like to nano, let me go back here, nano valid users, and I'm going to be uh, typing them down. As I see them, I have Mark, Andy, Forrest, Administrator, Sebastian, uh, Santi, Lucinda, and that for now. So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna um, hit Control C just to um, get out of the curb route, and I can. Uh, keep checking some other ports. So I have Microsoft Windows RPC. Let's try a no, uh, no login attack here. So I'm gonna be RPC client, the target IP, uh, target IP. I'm gonna be specifying a user as blank. And at the end, a tag in just to tell RPC client that I don't have a password, so don't ask me for it, right? So let me move it up here. And that's it. Now, here we have several commands, a lot of them actually, and they will depend on the um, the level of privileges we have over the um, default user, which is blank. And uh, some of the 
must command are enum dom users and query user right so i have a rid which is an identifier i don't know what the r stands for i don't remember and i can see for example here i don't know sebastian right so i'm gonna be querying user 0x479 so i can see the username with the full name sebastian karen um and several other things now important to for us to know is that there is a field called description where uh some uh like some uh, responsible system administrators and people in charge can write sensitive things here right so we might be on the lookout for it right and note that we can actually specify the c command and enum dom user sorry what was it <laughs> forgot so enum dom users right so enum dom users like that and that will give me the whole output without entering in the interactive mode so um this is good and i want to wrap this uh um hexadecimal values here because i'm gonna be going over a for loop in order to query every single user right so uh let me see what i can do here um okay so these users don't look like in like interesting for us and I will actually look at this. We have another user, SVC Alfresco. So nano valid users, SVC Alfresco. Just like that. And in here, I'm going to be, well, <laughs> that's fine. I'm going to be using uh, rep0x. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> let me awk and here i'm gonna be printing out the one second space i will give me the whole rid and with this i'm going to be um er let me try this okay let me Escape that one like this, cool, and another one such as right the closing square bracket, and it must be skipped. So I have this. I have an RID now. Now I want to be able to RPC client T U blank and C query user right. So I want to query 0x471 for example and i just want to have things like well i want to be um case insensitive mode and i want to check the username the full name just in case and the description nope didn't work so um Username, full name, description. Let me see if full name, username. Not really sure at this point. Uh, I don't know, user. Okay. And name. Cool. And full. I mean, username, full name. I'm not really sure how can, how can uh like rip them all. <laughs> Big rip. Is that it? Yeah, that was it. So, egrip, which is the same as using the flag E, full name. Now I want description. 
and that would do it. So I need those three fields. And I'm going to be using this one because for red and hold this command, I want you to do something. What are you going to do? So, please uh, echo uh, something like um, okay, red, uh, red. Colin. And okay, let me use this and echo tag M. Echo done. And here I want this command. All this command. So let us see if that works. Uh what happened in there? Here, I needed an extra. <laughs> so RID 0x144 is box health mailbox just like that and that looks good it's just enumerating obviously there are a ton of ways to like make it faster but that's just fine just for demonstration purposes um we can add threats to it uh, with the uh, ampersand sign at the end of the sentence and as well as a, as a um, wait keyword in bash, right? So I encourage you to look that up if you're interested. But for now, we're going to be waiting for the other users. But anyway, we, we, may, we might... Um, like scrape any more any other kind of information we didn't have before and his mailbox i don't know why it's not giving me uh the other users but well it's fine i mean it's working and i encourage you to find out what's going on here <laughs> and to improve it if i did i need to um pause the video and come out with a solution later but honestly i don't have that much time so i'm gonna just move on with the tutorial but the key takeaway here is that we found out a new user so now we might uh look the very same thing we tried in here i think it was curb root look at this we have the uh, the thing so with this i can now uh like check against the list a a, a list they have if the users are valid of course i know they're valid but just in order to show you right and look at that one thing that is fantastic about curve root is that if it has the no pre-auth required it will dump the hash for us to crack offline that is if it's an asrep roastable account it will give us the hash right away right for svc alfresco so what other way we could have do it to find out about this host reproducible account huh so we have get npusers.py and if we check the help menu we will see an an, an example right away right so wait npusers because I want to request a ticket granting tickets for users in a file, right? While I don't have their password, I want to do it, right? So I'm going to be using no pass. And it seems like I'm just filling out this, this syntax, but I'm actually just following this example right here. So users file, valid users. And I'm going to be specifying the domain, so http.local and a slash forward slash. That is super important. So look at that. We have a C SVC Alfresco hash in here. So I'm gonna uh, nano hash just like that. Save it and John hash the file. And a word list user share word lists rocku.txt. So let's go ahead with that. And um, look at that. We have a password now. So let me nano prets because I'm gonna be SVC Alfresco service. So now. What I want to do is check with crack map exec over SMB if we have any possibility of logging in with this user. 
So as we see all fresco and password service, right? And um, just like that, we see we have credentials. So let me check SMB map, EU SVC all, all fresco and P uh, service, right? And working on it and it must work. But that doesn't mean we have access to any share or, or even there's any interesting share or the or not default share the custom share or some work share <laughs> and, and in fact there is not right so let us move on with crack map except and why don't we try that when we in our aim because we didn't get the pond uh like message in there so that means we don't have the right permissions on a share in order to upload our malicious banner in there and execute it to get a reversal so that's out of out of the options right and we have a pawning here that means we can log in so winrm sorry evo winrm i for um well the ip u for svc alfresco u for service so with that and um we're in right so who am i all and we are on the remote management users that's actually the reason why we can't log in the win rm thing and look at this we are on the account operators and we are on the privileged it account and the and in the service accounts that's bad that's really bad because account operators uh have a lot of operation operational room to create accounts, change their groups, add add them in, add, add some accounts into groups, a uh, lot of things, a lot of things. So uh, let me, um, what are we gonna do here? So before everything, let me kill the other window, and from here I'm gonna be doing something, which is running Bloodhound. Okay. So, I'm going to be copying opt tools. That is a custom folder I have. And I want to use um, sharphound.ps1. Okay. I'm going to call it like sp.ps1. And I'm going to be hosting it in a HTTP server. Right. So, from here, I'm going to be go back, go to app data, amp local now then it's uh local amp there to list out and here i'm just well actually i'm gonna create a super sneaky uh file so like this just like whatever like that and i'm gonna be direct going through it and now that i'm here i'm gonna do something with powershell so i'm gonna be invoking an expression that is i that is what i stands for invoke expression and i'm gonna be creating a new object with a net that web client function right from here i'm gonna be using the method download string and in between quotation marks I'm going to be specifying the source I want to download this file from. And look at this because uh, this will actually download things to memory instead of disk. But that is kind of an evasion, antivirus evasion um, method. Um, obviously, whenever, I mean, just in case the, uh, the, the, the PowerShell file you're doing it's correctly obfuscated right i'm gonna be ps1 you can see the 200 get request in here and look at this there i don't have anything here because it's actually downloaded to memory now i can get a cat sp and grab for a function and that will give me a function such as invoke bloodhound and now i can grab for this and here are some examples right so i can run invoke blood hound uh collection method all 
and that will run the Bloodhound. Um, complete an immersion, and in the meantime, I'm gonna be splitting this up because I can Neo4j console. That is okay. That is the database I will be using for Bloodhound, and here I can just cut it up once it's booted up. So Neo4j 520 started so i can run bloodhound and um you'll see that it this pops up it's safe i mean um if it asks you for a password please go ahead and enter neo4j neo4j and it'll, it'll um request you a new one right away okay so let me cr uh, clear this database all right our database clear database cool clear sessions and refresh database stats and now i want to go back in here and look at this now it's downloaded um a that zip file now i'm going to be copy it to my machine and i'm going to be using in packet smb server and i want to be naming my share as folder and i'm going to be hosting it on my downloads folder and i'm going to be giving it smb2 support right but before let me remove uh, everything in my downloads folder yep okay i can <laughs> that's because that's that's a root owned file um that, that's fine actually so just like this and i'm going to be using copy to copy this file to a net share on 10 10 14 4 folder i'm gonna be naming it bh that zip bloodhound that zip and we'll copy it right away and once it's done we're gonna create it and uh and uh and um and import it into bloodhound so upload data right in here and uh, downloads bh that zip i will start uploading in uploading them and we have some computers, users, groups, containers, domains, um, group policies, and organizational units. A lot of things in here to, to analyze. And we'll see interesting things. So, um, let's wait in here a bit clear finished cool we are on and let's set the ball rolling by doing the refresh database stats and we'll see bunch of access control list relationship sessions a lot of stuff and we can go to analysis and, I, and we can start looking for something like this so i want to uh check find shortest paths to the main admins this domain now we'll see a lot of information here now Here's a user, administrator. Um, he's a like PC or a machine. Here's a group, anonymous, privileged IT accounts, and we are here. As we see Alfresco now, we can right click it and mark, mark it as owned in here. That will uh, give us a heads up any anytime we want to check what users uh, uh, have we on. Now look at this so we are a member of service accounts which is a member of privileged it accounts which can ps remote here right um and there is um, i mean this um this graph is actually lacking a lot of information so let me show you others such as shortest paths to high value targets here and Look at this okay so this looks like a mess but it's actually um more interesting because it shows us here is we sell fresco which is a member of service accounts which had which is a member of privileged it account which is at the same time a member of account operators right here and look at this we have three relationships going on look at the thick a uh, part of this line and it's thick here and it's thin here right so uh, the thick end it's the 
like the way a a a group of like does an action over another one like account operators has the generic all permissions over this group not the other way around uh, and also we have account operators generic all permissions over key admins and also over enterprise key admins but the interesting here key uh, thing here is that we have a generic all permissions over windows permi uh, exchange windows permissions but what is all this what is generic all right so let us go to help when we right click it and let us read this so generic call the members of the group account operators have generic call privileges to the group exchange windows permissions this is also known as full control this privilege allows the trustee to manipulate the target object however they wish that is interesting abuse info look at this full control of a group allows you to directly modify group membership of the group so we can actually add people to these groups we have generic all permissions over right so there are at least two ways to execute this attack the first and most obvious is by using the built-in net binary window such as net group domain admins harm joy add domain city object configuration staff for why this may be a bad idea the second and highly recommended method is by using the add domain group member function in power view We'll, we'll, we'll be doing that, right? This function is superior to using the net.exe binary in several ways. For instance, you can supply alternate credentials instead of needing to run a process as or log on as a user with the add member privilege. Um, additionally, you have much safer execution options that you do with spawning net.exe and basically that. So, uh, that's fantastic. What I'm going to do now is uh, let me see. So here creates a secure password and here a credential, which is a like the secure password plus the username, and then adds a member. I mean, it creates a member, right? Uh, oh no, here it creates it. Yeah. So let us create one first. So net user i think it's like this like hacked and then a password uh hacked one two three exclamation mark at was it like that yep net user and we have a hacked user in here right net user hacked and we are a part of the main users right so let us go with this thing in here because we actually can sec password convert to string. Now it's gonna be uh, uh what was it? <laughs> okay, so it says specify the cred if you're not already running a processes and account operators. Now SVCL Fresco is actually running as a member of service account operators, so we don't need that part, but if we wanted to try and we can actually we, we can just uh, type in here service with the three instead of the first e and here uh htb.local uh backward slash svc dash alfresco right so i can do this but before i need to import power view right so let me locate power view.ps1 and we have a valid our view ps1 from the powershell empire module so uh, let me copy it here and again uh, let me host a python server and with this invoke expression new object it's a good thing to remember things you know like type in type them all uh from scratch so web client um download Note that this is case insensitive, but I'm just doing it with capitalized letters just for you to know the the like the whole command, right? So like this HTTP 10 10 14 4 8000 power view at PS1 like that. There you go, import it, right? So now I can go ahead with this add domain group member and I can add to whatever group I want now which one of these i want 
I want exchange windows permissions. I want domain admins. No, domain admins not. I want uh, key admins or I want enterprise key admins. Was it? Yeah. Well, in fact, I want exchange windows permissions. And why is that? Because this has a feature over the whole domain, which is write the ACL. Now, before everything, let's go read it. And it says, with right access to the target objects, the ACL, you can grant yourself any privilege you want on the object. Let us see the abuse info. Look at this. You may grant yourself DC sync privileges. This is another attack. So you may need to authenticate to the domain controller as a member of Exchange Windows permissions at http.local if you are not running a process as a member. To do this in conjunction with add domain object ACL, first create a PS credential object and whatever. So then use that domain object ACL, optionally specifying cred if you're not already running the process. Same thing. So let us do that right away because whenever we have DC sync privileges, we will be able to dump the secrets. The NTD, NTDIT dot, um, did service, <laughs> something like that. I'll, I'll show you later. So, um, I want to see what the actual, uh, name of the group is. So exchange, exchange what was it a uh, windows permissions and members it's hacked right or user hacked and i don't need a credential here because svcl fresco is already running an, as an account operator let us do that now let's check the hacked user and we are now a member of this group so that's cool that's freaking cool with this i now can use this part in here i don't need a credential again and i can add a target identity such as htv.local and is it just like that not really sure um Once you have granted yourself this privilege, you may use the Mimikatz DC sync function to DC sync the password of, password or arbit of arbitrator principles on the domain. Okay, let me see that. Okay, it's, I'm not really sure if I have to do, run this domain, re, run this command as hacked. I don't think so. Okay, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So let me just tap this. Because I actually now need to run this as hacked. So let me sec password and it's remember. Uh, hacked123. And it's because I need to run this command as a user that is actually in that group. Uh, and I ask you, SVCL Fresco is in that group? No, he is not. We're not, but the one that is, is act, right? So, http.local act, just like that. That is our crit. And now, essentially, we can go ahead with this command credential crit http.local. And that should work. Let's cross our fingers. <laughs> And in the meantime, let's go preparing our um, secrets dump command like this. So I, I need a DCIP, um, pretty much that, right? A domain controller IP. Now I want to specify my uh, my domain here, http.local forward slash hacked, hacked123 and add my IP. Right, so let us change it one by one, such as act. I'm oh, sorry, http.local act act one two three at t. Actually, I think we cannot specify a variable t here, but 
manually, just like that. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, it's because of this, so let me close it into a single quotation mark. 10, 10, 14, 4, that should do it. And it's refusing the connection. Let me see what's going on in here. Okay, our connection is to be the local hacked hacker. It's not hacker, but hacked. Maybe it's that? No, error connection. Okay, uh, <laughs> I was typing in my very own IP address, so tell me me, right? So 101061, 101061. And with that, I think we'll see some other errors. Yep. So, uh, we are trying to do the DRSU API, but it's getting us errors just because we are not granted permissions um, with that user. So, I'm not really sure what's going on here. Well, let me set password. Okay. I may know what's wrong what's wrong in here and this is bad so let me go ahead again and this time I'm just gonna copy it uh, this line because I need to import power view once again damn what happened there okay thousand power view dot ps1 that should do it I'm here now. I want to sec password. Of course, and instead of hacker one two three is hacked one two three. And now I just need to add the red line here. Damn. So let me like this local. Act. Uh, sec password. And now I'll be defining the cred thing. And now finally, let me. Uh, where was it? Let me. Uh, you know what? Let me just copy it from Bloodhound once again. So like that. Instead of Tesla, that would be HTB.local. I'll let us see if it works. What? Tell me it does. <laughs> it does. I'm not really sure what would, what could be happening here. So secret stomp once again. It's not. So okay, let me just pause the video right here and and figure out what might be going on, and I'll get back to you with an answer. All right. All right, guys. Thanks for waiting. <laughs> I just came up with a solution and had to figure it, figure some things out first. First of all, uh, the power. Um, okay, f first of all, the solution I came up with, uh, thanks to Savitar for giving it up, it was to add this HTB.local domain in a canonical format like this. Uh, DC equals HTTP, comma DC equals local, and after that, add a principal identity hacked. That is our new username, right? Now I had to download it for the from the official source in here, um, which I noted this version actually had the principal identity parameter because otherwise it would give me a lot of trouble, such as this one. A parameter cannot be found that matches the parameter. And I had to download that new version, but once executed, it it didn't hang up, and it just uh, ran normally, right? And upon execution, secrets that down like this. I already showed you the command. I have a lot of hashes in here from the NTD. Let me show you the name NTDS that did secrets, right? So I'll, I have a bunch of hashes, and now I have something like this now. With this, we can perform a attack called pass hash, and it's 
because Windows has a feature that we do not need a clear text password to uh, to uh, log in or authenticate ourselves into a server or a service and we can actually do it with our hash so let us uh, validate this crack map except SM smbtu administrator and h for hashes now let us see that we can actually execute some commands with it and it says pond that means we have right access to some or every share in which we can upload our malicious file and have it executed to perform a reversal back to us so that's it and we can actually see it in winrm as well with that will be okay okay apparently we don't have winrm available for us which is weird let me run it one more time just to make sure okay it's fine so we can uh access through the smb just uh just with the mention i yeah sorry just with the method i mentioned earlier so ps psexec.py and i can go with uh let me see uh hashes i'm gonna be specifying this and then i think it's like that administrator at t cmd is it not really sure right now yes it is so administrator at my target ip and at the end give me a cmd shell look at this we have a shell so who am i cool so let me go back to see users because from here i want to catch every flag we have uh i mean svc alfresco's user.txt file and administrators root.txt file right so with this i'm going to be performing a um recursive file uh lookup with s b a colon d minus d minus h here and i'm going to be find string interact um in case insensitive and v i don't want to see update i want to see the all for all users i don't want to see cache i don't want to see microsoft vmware now let's see how it works out and i don't know since this is like a pxec.py kind of shell if this will hang up because in evil winrm over winrm connection it will do just fine but um let me just see if it doesn't we'll just uh close this up and open up another one and look at manually it must be on the desktop or documents folder okay so i'm not gonna wait any more time in here clearly just hanged up hung up so uh let us go again just okay uh cdc user set minis trader mm, the hell um just copy it again there and i'm gonna be there there desktop there you go that type desktop root.txt and we're just fine that's our flag and svc alfrescos must be on his desktop as well so uh that's a wrap for today this was again one of my favorite machines on the easy level for active directory i definitely uh, recommend it to everyone that is planning on uh just starting off with active directory penetration testing and all stuff and uh, well i hope you guys liked it as much as i did and i'll see you later with another video thank you for joining